I should do a video just recording me doing thumbnail poses. <laughs> it would not make an any etiquette video. Welcome to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. I've got another request. I love these requests. You guys are making my job so easy. Thank you to Hans for this request. Uh, Hans flicked me a note on my email saying, hey, listen, I saw this video around, you know, how to carry and wear bags, different types of bags, and it made me think of a topic for you, which was handbag etiquette. And I thought, oh God, what have I got to offer in relation to handbag etiquette? And I started to write a list and I sat on it for, well, not literally, but I sat on it for a good month thinking, is this really worthy of me filming a video? And then I asked you guys, the great wealth of knowledge that exists on both my YouTube community page and my slowly growing Instagram page to let me know what you think are interesting points to add to this topic. And I got quite a few, so thank you very, very much. So this topic kind of could spread, you know, across a whole breadth of subtopics, but I am going to split it into two main parts, which is etiquette of the handbag carrier, me and you, uh, and etiquette of the civilians, those that are not handbag carriers themselves, or potentially lack the same love and adoration that me and potentially you have for our luxury bags. So, uh, we're going to start with what the handbag carrier should be conscious of, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, I never thought I'd be doing an etiquette video. Uh, and then um, how to address some of the challenging situations we find ourselves in with the civilians. So um, I've got my trusty Remarkable here as per usual. Uh, now the first topic that kind of came up is where do you put your bag in certain situations? Um, the first one is when you're out for a meal. Do you put your bag on the table? Now, I'm going to answer all these questions from my perspective. And I'm, I'm doing that from the perspective. Of, well, I'm doing that with the hope that if I've got really poor etiquette, you could potentially counsel me in the comments or... If something I do is helpful for you, then you can take it up as part of your handbag etiquette repertoire. So um, heading out for a meal, does the bag go on the table? Look, um, my personal view is that if I'm carrying a clutch or a mini bag, I'm okay to put it on the table if the table's big enough to hold all the food and drink and my bag. So sometimes you'll get a table for two that could actually seat four people and you find that yourself and your eating buddy are kind of sitting next to each other and there's a whole big space at the other end of the table. When that's the case, I will put my clutch or mini bag on the table as long as that's a bag that's never been on the floor, okay? If that's not the case... Um, and I'm with a larger group of people, or there's going to be a big spread of food, or the table's small, uh, and it's a clutch or a mini bag, I will put it in my lap and then put my napkin over the top of it. But it depends on what I'm eating and how much I trust myself not to drop that onto the napkin and then it seeps through onto the bag. So in some cases, depending on the chair, I will pop the bag behind me. So I'll sit up quite straight and then just pop the bag between my backside and the chair. And that feels like it's not exposed um, and it's less likely to have food or drink spilt on it there. Another option, if it's, you know, you're not sitting al fresco um, on a sidewalk um, or you're not in a space or you're not carrying a bulky bag is to hang your bag if it has a strap over the back of your chair. Um, but again, security is really going to be relevant in that scenario. If you've got a bigger bag, um, what I would do, um, we, there are a few questions around bag hooks and things. Absolutely. If I've got bags that um, I don't want to put on the ground, I'll always take a bag hook 
Um, but it was raised in the comments around, okay, you're out for a meal, you've put your bag on a bag hook and a waiter spills food on it or drink on it. Whose responsibility is that? We'll get to that in the next part of the video. Um, but it's a risk, right? Um, or it just makes things difficult because there's this big bulky bag sitting in between your legs and the table legs and somebody else's legs. So if it's a big bag um, and there are spare chairs, I would definitely always ask um, wait staff or the maid of D if they have a bag stool or a spare chair that you could put your handbag on. Now, if you don't ask, you don't get. And you would be surprised that there are a few people like us out there who do ask for such things and it's no big deal, usually. Um, especially when seating numbers are quite restricted in eating establishments now due to COVID. So um, there's plenty of spare chairs. And if all else fails, and it's a nice clean floor, um, I will usually put my bag directly under my seat, not to the side of me where things can get spilt in it or it can get kicked by other people, not behind me where it could get brushed or taken, but directly under my seat. And then I put my heels under my seat so I can just touch it and it gives me that sense of security that it's still there. So they're all the scenarios that I can think of around eating out with a handbag. Now to carry on the theme of eating out, cocktail events. So where well, you're not sitting down, but you're standing up. Um, one of the questions that I had around the handbag etiquette is, that, is it okay to shake someone's hand while you've got a handbag on the crook of your arm? I don't see why not, but uh, at least in my circles, we're kind of not shaking hands at the moment because of this pandemic thing. Um, but I'd never considered it to be something rude unless my bag was so heavy and I couldn't give a decent handshake. That would be rude. I would take that as, as not reflective of my own personal values. Um, but I'm okay with that. How about you? So at a cocktail event, I would always carry a bag that can go on my shoulder um, so there's at least a shoulder carry option or a clutch that I could put under my arm without kind of looking like this. Um, just so it's under my arm and I can hold a napkin with an hors d'oeuvre and take a drink or use my other hand to feed myself said hors d'oeuvre. Um, I think having a hand carry bag means that you've got to put your bag on high tables um, which may be where everybody's putting their drinks while they're trying to eat or off to the side somewhere which puts it at risk for security or at your feet which is just not ideal so if you can avoid it at all at a cocktail event don't do hand carry bags make sure that you can have your hands free because you'll need it for all the yummy goodies and the drinks Another option for a cocktail event is wristlets. So something that's quite small and not too heavy, just attached to your wrist so that you can still be relatively hands-free. And we're going to move on to travel and transit. So um, I'm talking about public travel, where it's not just your personal car. Um, when it comes to trains and buses, if you are going to wear a backpack, if I'm going to wear a backpack, uh, on a train and bus, I, look, I'm lucky. I live in a very privileged part of the world where it's unlikely that anyone would get into my backpack whilst it was on my back if I wore backpacks, which I don't, um, and take things out of it. But personally, if I was wearing a backpack, I would sling it on so that the front of the, the backpack is actually on my front um, just for the journey. Uh, and if I was sitting down, I'd probably still have it sitting on my knees because I don't want to put it on the floor of the train or the bus. If I'm carrying a tote, um, I should probably show you some bag candy, shouldn't I? But if I'm carrying a tote, I think for me, it's more courteous to other travelers to carry the tote handheld 
or potentially on the arm so that it sits in front of my body rather than up on my shoulder like this where it can bang into people especially when you're getting on and off trains and buses um, again I try not to put my bags on the ground so anything I can do not to have my bag on the ground um, is kind of my preference which takes me to planes if you're taking one of your luxury bags on a plane um, overhead lockers and carpets on planes are a bit gross um, putting your bag under the seat in front of you on that carpet each to their own for me I'm not a huge fan of doing that um, I do do it with my Neverfull because it's a workhorse bag but if your Neverfull was a little more precious to you I'd suggest um, putting it inside of a bag that is a little less precious to you some people use the Longchamp Le Pliage totes which I can pop one up I've got mine here somewhere I don't know where it is um, you know just as a, a barrier between the bag and the floor um, and if you're using smaller bags that's also a great option because you can put some extra bits and pieces in there as you carry on using the overhead locker for your luxury bags look don't book a seat near a bulkhead or an emergency exit because all of your carry-on has to go in the overhead locker and what happens I know especially for you guys in the Northern Hemisphere where you've got way more generous uh, carry-on baggage is that everyone stuffs their luggage in and they don't care what they're crushing or um, what valuable things might be there. It's just how do I get it in so I don't have to check it and pay luggage. That's a massive risk to me. So uh, if you are in that situation, I would not book a seat near a bulkhead or an emergency exit uh, and I would try with all my might um, to make sure that any of my beautiful bags especially were not touching the ground under the plane seat in front of me. So that takes us, we've, we've, uh, we've been out for dinner, we've been out for cocktails, we have travelled, now we're going to work. And one of the big questions that came through a few times in relation to handbag etiquette was very much related around what's appropriate at work and do you change your handbag style depending on the place that you're at or if you're at work versus casual. Uh, <laughs> for me personally, and I think I've mentioned this a few times on this channel, I have three bags that I would use for work as totes so I have my uh, Prada bag here which is pretty minimal I'd say I've got my Neverfull and I have my Chanel GST um, I would say I use the Neverfull and the Chanel GST the most and this one I do not even bother about trying to turn it around and hide it because to me this makes it looks like the blah to me this makes it look like the um the dupe bags rather than the bag it is and I am not going to do that to my GST um I think this is subtle yes it's designer yes it's Chanel but I'm not going to hide that I think that's quite appropriate with regard to my Prada bag I think it has a logo on it that says Prada so in some ways it's probably more flashy than the Chanel GST is because it says that it's Prada but in both cases if you know you know and if you don't it doesn't matter interestingly when I go um, outside of the city I tend to use this bag the most um, and this bag is very obviously Louis Vuitton because nobody knows what it is and I'm not worried about being judged for having a Louis Vuitton bag. Um, I'm just not. I work for myself. I think my if my clients had challenges with how I dress and my brand, they wouldn't engage me in the first place. Yeah, I really, I actually find that I connect with a lot of people because I notice their shoes and things like that. Uh, and we know. If you're in a more corporate environment, however, and by that I mean you turn up to the same place every day and there is a dress standard, 
I would take your cues from the dress standard. Um, I know that Chic Professor, hi Jess, if you happen to be watching this, um, Jessica at Chic Professor, she um, has a great channel about corporate workwear and appropriate bags and shoes and those sorts of things. Um, to be honest, that's not something I did even when I was in a corporate office environment. Um, I think maybe it's just my experience, whether it's uh, the city that I work and live in or it's Australia. Um, we're not so uptight. I think you can take your cues from the men. Um, most men uh, are not wearing a tie and even people in corporate offices wouldn't wear a tie unless they had a client meeting or something. So, um, so, so they usually have their jacket and their tie hanging on a coat hanger on the back of their office door, um, at least in my experience anyway. So I kind of take my cues from there and say, well, if you can wear a purple shirt with polka dots, I can carry a Louis Vuitton bag. I don't think that that's a big issue. Um, it always takes somebody to start if it's a new cultural thing. Um, whether you want that person to be you or not, that's the decision that you've got to make. So for me to answer that question, I'm just going to say you need to do what makes you feel comfortable. I have certainly been the person that's been asked in the lift, oh, you must earn a lot of money to have that handbag when I worked for a corporate organisation. And I said, well, it's not so much how much I earn, but it's what I do with it that got me this bag. Okay, this is turning into be quite a marathon video. Uh, the next section is a really fun, icky one. Toilet. When you go to the toilet, what do you do with your handbag? Oh my goodness. Um, this one was at the top of my list. Nobody requested this, but it's a very real struggle for, for me anyway, especially not so much at home, obviously, um, but at public toilets particularly. So here is my etiquette for taking your handbag to the toilet. One, hopefully there's a hook on the back of the toilet door. That would always be a win. If there's not a hook on the back of the toilet door, um, I am hoping and praying that I've packed a little handbag butler that I can hook onto the door myself and hang my bag off of. If I haven't put that in my bag, <laughs> here's where things get interesting. If it's a bag that's got a shoulder strap, I will put that strap around my neck uh, for, <laughs> now you're picturing it, aren't you? Um, so that my bag's not on the floor. I'm not going to go any further than that. When I'm in airports, I'm usually carrying a small um, roll-along case and I'll take that into the toilet with me and put my handbag on top of the case. Uh, if I have the option and there's no one around, I will sometimes use the, um, the parents' room toilet, which has like a baby change table in it. Um, and they usually have, you know, paper towel and things, so I can pull the baby change table down and put my bag on it. Um, and yeah, that makes life easier. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, two more things as the handbag carrier. Um, the condition of your handbag. Uh, someone always said to me, you can tell a lot about a person by the condition of their shoes. And I think the same applies for handbags. So I don't like carrying around busted, um, manky, dirty, loss of structure handbags. I think it really pulls apart your whole outfit. Even if you love that handbag, like give it some love or carry it in a way that shows it in its best light. Um, yeah, that, that's a big one. Um, just like really bad shoes with the little heel tips coming off and busted open and all that kind of stuff. It's not a great, it's not a great look. It's not fabulous. Uh, and then the final one for the handbag carrier is what's the etiquette around converting handbags? Things like toiletry bags into handbags and anything that's not a handbag into a handbag. <sighs> My personal opinion is it's not something that I do because I come from um, 
a position where I've got a lot of options to choose from. Uh, and I haven't liked the toiletry bag enough that I would consider converting it into a handbag. I think it's got to look like it was made that way for it to make the mark. Um, the shopper totes that are being converted into handbags the real challenge here is, I suppose the point is that I want to make is everyone can make their own decisions, but if you're turning shopping bags into handbags or cosmetic bags into handbags, does it say luxury handbag or does it say trying to be a luxury handbag? Um, in which case, is that something that you're okay with? Um, and if you are, cool, go for it. And if you're not, maybe consider it a little bit further. Why don't I make this into two videos? I might make it into two videos because this is quite long. So uh, stay tuned for the next edition where uh, we talk to the civilians, those who are not handbag lovers, around appropriate etiquette when dealing with a luxury handbag addict, such as me or maybe you. If you've liked that video, please Give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. I'll see you next time. Bye.